Well, here's our fourth special topic we've chosen for special review as we come down the home stretch and get ready for May 8th. And I wanted to focus tonight on implicit differentiation. And really, I want to make the case that we've always done chain rule on all of our derivatives, whether we realized it or not, and even before we even knew what the chain rule was. On my first derivative here, we're going to do the derivative. If you look at the denominator, it says with respect to x. And because the equation is in terms of x, you know, it doesn't feel like we're doing chain rule, but really I want you to think of the x as the inner function. And go ahead and put those parentheses in there as you write down this problem. So the cube is the outer function and the x is the inner function. So as I go through this derivative, I'm going to do the derivative of the outer. We're going to leave the inner alone. It's now going to be squared. And I'm going to finish by taking the derivative of the variable inside with respect to, in this case, x. Now I think it makes a lot of sense why we've never finished that way because dx over dx just becomes a 1 and that's why we've always written 15x squared. However, in our second example, it's the same function, 5x cubed, but this time we're doing the derivative with respect to t. So again, let's think of x as being the inner function. We do the derivative of the outer, leave the inner alone, it's now squared, and then we do the derivative of what was inside with respect to, in this case, t. So we finish with 15x squared dx dt. So that's the basic fundamentals. And now we're going to go ahead and take a look at a couple of examples and just to make sure we're ready for anything that we may see uh, on May 8th. In our first example, we're going to throw the probably the AP's favorite uh, uh, trick they try to keep up their sleeve, and that's they try to sneak the product rule by you. When you look at this example, hopefully your eyes are drawn to this part of the problem right here where you see the product rule screaming. Um, you know, the derivative of the first term with respect to x is just a real clean 6x plus. Now, as you get ready for the product rule, I'm going to leave the 5 on the outside, okay? And I'm going to consider x to be my first, and I'm going to consider y squared to be my second. So I'm going to go first times the derivative of the second, and there's where I get my dy dx, plus the second times the derivative of the first, which is just a 1. And then I'm going to finish with minus 12y squared dy dx. And then we'll finish by setting it equal to 0. Uh, don't forget that, of course, the derivative of a constant is 0, whether it's with respect to x or y or t or any other variable. Now, of course, the big trick is to try to isolate the dy dx. So out of the four terms on the left side, two of them possess a dy dx. And so I'm going to leave them where they are. So I've got the, the 10xy dy dx and the minus 12y squared dy dx on the left side. And meanwhile, I'm going to go ahead and ship the two other terms. I'm going to subtract the 6x over, and I'm also going to subtract the 5y squared over to the other side. Last but not least, we're going to factor out the dy dx as a little bit of a GCF. And then we're going to take the quantity that uh, was left over and divide it. So we're looking at, let's see, we've got 10xy minus 12y squared on the bottom. Now, here's a, pro a pretty common trick. If three out of the four terms in my answer are negative, they're probably going to go ahead and divide both top and bottom by negative one. So we're going to end up with 6x plus 5y squared all over, let's see, it would be probably 12y squared minus 10xy. And that's probably how they choose to express their answer. Our next bear trap is we're going to go tackle a second derivative here. And you could tell simply by the notation if you look right here, uh, the notation tells the story. We're looking for the second derivative. The kicker here is when we're all done, our second derivative has to be expressed in terms of just x and y. And we're not allowed to leave like a, a first derivative or a dy dx in that answer. So let's go ahead and, and I, I tell you what, feel free to hit the pause button and then, you know, kind of come on back and fast forward through my work just to check if you're feeling extremely confident. Uh, you know, I certainly don't uh, mean to waste your time on something like this, but if you're not, if you don't consider you're an expert, yourself an expert on this topic, then by all means, stick around and watch uh, how I go ahead and attack this. We've got our 8x plus our 2. We got a little GCF, and let's see. Looks like I could divide every term by 2 as well, so I'm feeling like, let's see. So I'm feeling a 4x plus 1 all over, let's see, y plus 1. Hope that's right. All right, now for the second derivative, all we got to do is go through a little quotient rule here. So I'm going to say that my second derivative with respect to x is going to be the low times the derivative of the high minus the high times the derivative of the low, which in this case is dy dx. 
Okay, and that's what we got to watch out for. And of course, it's all over low squared. So here's the kicker. I've got to take the answer I had back here and substitute it into that expression right there. So it's going to get a little messy here. Um, and then we're going to try to clean up this complex fraction. So right now, I've got 4 times the quantity y plus 1 minus, let's see, 4x plus 1 times this big ugly bear, 4x plus 1 all over y plus 1. And that whole thing is divided by y plus 1 squared. Now, here's the trick. How would you have treated a complex fraction back in Algebra 2? We're going to multiply all three terms. There's, there's, see, there's, there's a term here, there's a term here, and then there's a term here on the bottom. I'm going to multiply all three of them by y plus 1. All right? And let's see what that gives us. And, of course, how did I, why did I decide on that? Well, whatever the denominator was here, that's what I was going to eventually multiply everything by. So I've got 4 quantity y plus 1 squared, and then I've got minus the quantity 4x plus 1 squared all over. Don't forget about this guy. This is probably the one that gets forgotten about the most. This one's now going to be cubed, and that's what I would say is my final answer for my second derivative of that function. Well, I wanted to try to sneak in one more mini topic on this video just because I thought implicit was so easy. And, I, and they're not terribly related, but uh, I guess they are derivatives nonetheless. Um, I wanted to talk about logarithmic differentiation and, you know, when do we use it, how do we know when to use it, and, and what to expect. But anyway, here's the example that I wanted to tackle. Let's say we had the function y equals x raised to the cosine of x power. And they wanted the derivative with respect to x. You know, the direction say something like, you know, let's go find dy dx. Okay. Now you'll notice, and here's the key, we've got a variable. When you look on the right side over here, there's not only a variable in the base, okay, uh, and when I say base, I'm referring to this rascal, but there's also a variable in the exponent as well. Typically, we would only have a variable in the base and not the exponent, or in the exponent but not the base, but in here we've got, uh, you know, both cases happening. So here's a trick, and that's what's going to tell me to use this technique called logarithmic differentiation. So what we're going to go ahead, we're going to take the natural log of both sides. Okay, this is not necessarily a calculus move. It's just a very basic Algebra 2 move. Whatever we do to one side, we do to the other. What that allows us to do is to use one of the log properties that says the exponent can become the coefficient. So now it's the cosine of x times the natural log of x. Put a little multiplication in there just for emphasis. And now we're ready to do a little bit of calculus here and take our derivative. Um, again, we're going to do the derivative of y, all divided by y equals, let's see, product rule first, times the derivative of the second, plus the second, times the derivative of the first. See if we can squeeze it in there, almost. Okay, now all we've got to do is isolate the dy dx. So we're going to multiply the y to the other side. We've got minus sine of x times the natural log of x, multiplied the y to the other side. And then last but not least, they want the derivative in terms of x only. So what we're going to do is, we're going to get rid of this y based on how it was originally defined. The original problem said that y was equal to x to the cosine of x. So usually when you use this technique, your answers are very, you know, ugly and they don't simplify or clean up very nice. And that's okay. It is what it is. You know what I mean? So that's, this is exactly how my answer would look if I was doing logarithmic differentiation.